In a time where the moon landings and shuttle missions are ancient history, the things that inspired so many of our current scientists and engineers, and the Mars mission seem like an eternity away, how do we inspire the next generation to pursue careers in STEM fields? Because technology surrounds us, the need for STEM-based jobs is increasing, although the uh, desire to pursue such careers has been decreasing, something that we weren't really expecting. We need to get the next generation excited about STEM careers. And how do we do this? We spark the imagination of the next generation and make STEM seem fun and exciting. How do we actually do that? Well, we get them hand, or we get kids to uh, get hands on in their learning. We give them role models so they can see themselves in a STEM career. We tell them the questions they're going to be the ones to answer someday. And lastly, we leave them wanting to learn more. So instead of lecturing kids about the forces of nature, we can actually have them experience those forces of nature for themselves. Now at the Michigan Science Center, we like to get interactive. So I'm going to need a little bit of help from my friend Lee over here. Uh, come on up, come on up on stage. Everyone give her a round of applause for being my brave volunteer today. So normally, I don't get to choose my volunteers beforehand, but she's been awesome uh, and volunteering this morning. Um, so she doesn't really know exactly what's going to be happening. I told her she's going to be spinning, but she doesn't know uh, what, <laughs> what we're doing. So Lee, come on over here. I'm going to have you step up on this platform right here. All right. There we go. All right. You OK? Excellent. So. I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of a spin, and I want you to hold your arms out like this. And then when I tell you to, I want you to bring your hands in really quickly, OK? OK. All right, let's see what happens. Let's give her a nice little spin. OK, Lee, go ahead and bring your arms in. Put them back up. Bring them back in. Put them back out. All right, you guys can kind of see that she is, I'm going to go ahead and stop you. You can kind of see that she is speeding up a little bit when she brings her arms in, but if we add a little bit of weight, all right, I'm going to give you these five pound weights right here, and I want you to hold them out just like you were before. I know, you're getting your workout today. Hold those weights out and then bring them in really quickly just like you did, okay? All right, we're going to give you a little bit of a spin again. OK, now bring your arms in. Go ahead, put it back out. Bring it back in. Put it back out. All right, I'm going to stop you before you throw up. OK. <laughs> All right, you can step down. Again, give Lee a round of applause for being my volunteer. Yes, excellent. Thank you. So Lee, were you actually able to feel the forces that were acting on you while you were on that spinning platform? Yeah, when you can feel the forces that are acting on you, you're more likely to remember that and then in turn be able to set up the force equations and understand the mathematics behind why all of that works. Now I want to get everyone involved. So I want everyone to, with me to imagine a scientist. Go ahead. Imagine a scientist, close your eyes if you must. Everyone imagining that scientist? Okay, I bet that you're imagining someone like Albert Einstein or uh, Nikola Tesla, Bill Nye, all of which have a lot in common. Not all kids are gonna grow up and look like them. So we need to give kids role models so that they're able to grow up and see someone that is in a career that looks a lot like them. Now, I personally am a scientist. I'm an astronomer. And I don't really look much like your typical scientist, although I do look like I should be driving a magic school bus. <laughs> so, Michigan Science Center, we have started what we call the, the STEMINISTA project to show middle school girls that not only are there women out there in STEM fields, but to uh, have those women mentor the girls. 
Those women are actually mentor the girls and show them it's okay to be a nerd. Everyone remembers that one person that had an impact on their life and their career. If it weren't for my high school physics teacher, Ms. Sharon Brock, I may not have ended up growing up and becoming a scientist. I may not have ended up growing up and pursuing physics. Now, so far, we've talked about the things that we can see, things we can feel, things we can touch, um, but there's a lot of stuff in the universe that we can't see, a lot of stuff in the universe that we don't know. And if we tell kids the things that we don't know and tell them they're going to be the ones to figure out the answers to those questions, they're going to have something to look forward to. Now, I want everyone in here, uh, so anyone in here ever hear of dark matter before? Go ahead and raise your hands if you've heard of dark matter before. Okay, quite a few of you. How many of you in here, raise, keep your hands raised, if you know what dark matter is? Okay, we still have a few hands raised. You're gonna be winning the Nobel Prize in physics. Uh, no one knows what dark matter is. We haven't been able to directly detect it, so there's really no way to definitively prove at this point what dark matter is. Dark matter is one of my favorite things to talk about in the planetarium because I get to tell kids I don't know. I don't know what dark matter is. Dark matter is stuff that we can't see, but we're pretty sure it's there. And it's gonna take the next generation of scientists to figure it out. I once had a little boy in the planetarium and he was so excited about dark matter. He actually came up to me after the show and he told me, five-year-old boy, I'm gonna be the one to figure out what dark matter is. That day, um, I know that boy is gonna become a scientist someday and I like to think that I had an impact on his life. So in the planetarium, I like to end every show with a ride on a Mobius loop. Not because I talk about the shape or the mathematics behind it, although if they ask, I totally will, but because, be, because kids love it. I like to have every experience that they have with science ending with something that makes them want to come back and do it again. Now, because I can't take everyone in here on a virtual roller coaster ride on a Mobius loop through space, I'm gonna have to settle for something else that's pretty fun. So right here I have sort of your average trash can, and I've cut a hole in the bottom, everyone can see that hole right there, and I've stretched a shower curtain over the end. And if I take this, you guys see my little paper cup right there? If I take this and I hit it, and knocks the cup down. Now, if I add just a little bit of fog to this, let's see if we can get this working. If I can add just a little bit of fog to this, oh, there we go. We're actually gonna be able to see the shape that this makes. When we hit the center of the can, the air in the center is moving faster than the air on the edges. And we can, see, we can just make fun smoke rings all day long. Now, before I go, I wanna encourage all the scientists, engineers, and mathematicians out there to help me make STEM fun. Let's, uh, let's give them the questions that we don't know. Let's get them hands-on in their learning. And let's inspire the next generation of scientists together.